All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Nisei, Nisei Monogatari, Monogatari, episode seven. seven. Okay. All right. All right. We had quite the previous episode with mm -hmm. almost the entire episode dedicated to her greatness, Hitagi Senjugo Hara. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, there was a great talk with uh, Hachikuji at the beginning before the opening. Then yeah. There, then, then a big old, that had that like somber, yeah. you know, feel to it. But then big old conversation mm -hmm. with Senjugo Hara. She was vulnerable in her own special way mm -hmm. and Araragi was wonderful and the pencils came tumbling down oh, all of them and then Suki said the Karn's missing she left yes. Araki and goes out to find her Shinobu Shinobu appears yeah. and is wonderful Shinobu and then, was hilarious absolutely incredible <laughs> <laughs> but then she's like oh yeah and she just points you know like behind her or whatever and then yeah. Aragi turns and looks, and he seemed concerned, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. so it almost seemed like, basically, Karin was extremely close by. Uh-huh. Or it may something... be in a vertical direction as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Possibly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's go save Karin, y'all. Yep. So, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, we're going to be starting the episode in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. <laughs> Nisi Monogatari, 7th episode. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I love her theme music. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. Mm. Oh, that's true. <laughs> okay. All right. Even though, like, this episode will probably be focused on Karin and should be, mm -hmm. there's a part of me that hopes that because Shinobu was introduced, like, you know, was active at the end of the previous episode, right? that, like, she'll still play a part in whatever is about to happen here. For sure. That would be pretty cool. Hey, you know what that little uh, egg thing is with the mm -hmm. little nub at the top? It's Araragi's micro penis. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get that? From a fried egg. Look, look at this OP. It's like, it's, it's, it's like extremely like, oh my. Like there's all these like little shots where they open up uh, Karin's shirt and stuff. You'll... Sure. And then there's the parts where they like accent her, like to make her look older and stuff. And uh, like sexy version, you know. But, but. But then like, but... it's, it's an egg and you know, like. Well, or maybe it's a reference to the fact that she's gone through puberty and now she's, you know, physically capable of oh, bearing children. Oh, sure. I'm not taking you know. this seriously, Jacob. I'm oh, just okay. telling you, like... Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That does me a lot. Talking about micro penises. I was, that's, I was not, wondering, that's not a serious subject. How did you make subject. that connection? I mean, it is a serious problem for those I mean, of you that... Yeah, and, I'm sorry. And Araki oh, could whoa. have that problem. Oh. Can it be part seven okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! She's all hot and bothered. <laughs> so! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ho ho. Pain. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're actually fighting now. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god. Because wow. why not? Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wish I wasn't hotter. What? Uh. Oh. <laughs> What, what, what? There's so much background stuff. <laughs> yes. I thought that was Kanbaru. Oh, that was that was good. I love how Shinobu has, like, a recliner, like, just a nice sofa in whatever this internal world is of his shadow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recreation on I'll the top of it. later. That isn't enough. Oh, my. <laughs> Two head pats. <laughs> Unprotected head pat. Oh my. Huh. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. She's actually destroying him. I'm going to kick you yep, instead. Yep, yep. Whoa! That was smooth! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! Wow! <laughs> oh my god! Let's just have all this animation in here, because why right, not? Right, because why not? Ugh. <laughs> I'm an F mothering vampire. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's very dangerous, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so bad it has, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, music changed. And what about you, Aragi? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she doesn't know everything, yeah. Is what she knows. Exactly. Oh. And yet...
No. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kaiki. I don't think you're standing dramatically enough. <laughs> Naughty Ferris wheel. Mmm. <laughs> Nanny. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Enlightenment? Mm-hmm. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Why is it being, why is that shot being framed that way? Yeah. Gaining new perspective, possibly. Right. <laughs> the background there. Yeah. <gasps> He's a con man, after all. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Just to pay for it with blood. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, now he's right. Yeah. Oh. This music is so good. Ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. Right.
this track again. This is great. Sorry mm. to say, but I was just a fake. Me say, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Roll credits. And see how Aragi's gone. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Mm. The way they're framing it, so mm -hmm. it's just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. All right. That was a very Hanakawa like yeah, answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is a fake. Oh, whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. So therefore they do. Yeah. Placebo. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> Hmm, that's quite, quite pointed specifically at our Aragi there. <laughs> our Aragi's pretty good at delusions in general, so... Oh. <laughs> nice. I mean, they did say they're the Fire Sisters, so... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Sandra Gahara. <laughs> that was horrible of you. <laughs> mm. Oh, really? Huh? Mm. Uh, nice, okay. Right. Ah. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's like, alright, I'm out. That's cool. I mean, yeah. Oh, here it is. Here's the crux of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Kiki. Holy crap. <laughs> it's not like I liked him or anything with Baka. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Possibly. I do love myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Yep. Oh. Compliment me. <laughs> Clearly. Yes. <laughs> of yes. course, of course. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Wait. What? Okay. What are you doing? Yes. Yeah.
Mm. Sure. Oh. In some ways, they want to be like you, Ori-chan, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. So. But but we still need to okay. So we need to get Sukihi's story resolved in in whatever different way it would be for her, since this is very much focused on Karen. And I was wondering if they were going to then end going up like showing Araragi's room and Senjikahara's there in his bed. Like, hey, I mean, we cut to him waking up the next uh -huh. day. I mean, so and the he had a bunch of bed is there. But like, yeah. Kaiki deshu. Kalamian dead. <laughs> Those are too expensive for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> the way he talks. Ah, Suki there Phoenix. We go. There we go. Okay. Cool. cool. I love how slowly he speaks. Yes, I know. He's just tired and yeah. Uh... <laughs> so good. All right. All right. So Sandra Gahara has resolved her past. Yep. And in a lot of ways, the past that didn't need to be resolved was more acknowledged that it didn't need to be resolved. Also, right. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we have the whole Kaiki thing uh, essentially kind of solved Gone. as well. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, and. Aragi and her? <laughs> Maybe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hmm. Here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. It's not that I wanted to see anything, <laughs> right? But the fact that they leave it up in the air, whether or not it happened. Kind of peeves me a little bit. Did they just bang? You know, it was really unclear. It was really unclear. And here's the yeah, thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Since Monogatari is a is a harem show. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. Right. One of the things about harems is that MC, you know, numbskull yeah, blockhead yeah. protagonist usually, usually, you know, never actually has anything happen. Monogatari with the isn't oh, a oh, usual no, no, type no, no, no. show. I know. I know. And that's why. That's that's the reason why, why this is so why, good. Why this this is so good, but it also bugs me because the thing is, is that it very well could have all happened. It, all like, it has to, all you have to do is just show Sandra Gahara again and go, Araragi kun. Do you realize now <laughs> that like, we, yeah. like, right, right, we have exactly. to take this relationship yes. to the next stage? Yes. And he's like, the next stage. He's like, what's beyond had? that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But but the thing is, is that that. That 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 confirmation that 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 this show is so much better. Well, just than say the they others. have, Jacob. I maybe know. maybe maybe Kaiki was right. There is no truth in this world. I know, I know, what? and it's yeah, I know. It's and them, it's, it's actually them, like it's super them. meta, is what he's saying. Yeah, it's, it's making a meta clever point. And it's okay. saying okay. basically like you believe it to be so, then it is so. Sure, and and then in that case, you know, but but the thing is that that it still it still ends up just feeling like a head cannon. And, no, uh, no, uh, no, no. Uh, 
you you're so great you're like you like you start off your whole statement with a lie of it's not like i wanted to see anything no liar i just liar. No, i just wanted to have it be clear that it happened how can you know without seeing though oh. jacob very easily they could have they could have just showed Sinji cards blood or something like that or be she like, would never go to their house or though. or or they could just have the sisters be like by the way you got home late last night oh yeah it was nothing you know that's showing <laughs> it basically no 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 it's not it's not showing it you no, know no it. no i know you but know it's it. showing but, essentially but it's, it's showing that definitively it happened but jacob he had bedhead that happens any time you sleep, pretty much. No, not all the time. Not all the time. Not all the time. Right. But but still, sometimes you have to be exceptionally moving, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Still, uh, yeah. Anyway, Jacob, as someone with shorter hair, like no. you, 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 yeah. you might not get that much bed. No, no, but, but uh, I'll tell no. you. No, yeah, it, you get you get pretty crazy bedhead. But yeah, yeah. um, the now now the the real question is, and you may hate me for saying this. But since it, it was established twice this episode that Shinobu feels his pain and fear, I she hope feels for his her. Pleasure. Like, oh boy. Like, imagine how awkward that would be if, if you know, him and Senjikahara are going at it, and then suddenly Shinobu's like, hey, by the way, um, <laughs> could you just sort of trying to sleep here are you kidding or, me no she's she's so she's so quirky and stuff she's probably like enjoying it she's probably just like ah you know like just or, like or she'd be like she's like quick time it with me you know? <laughs> or or she would be making commentary in his head about like she's not having as much fun as you think she is right now no, 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 he, she can't feel her stuff oh sure right yeah definitely but <laughs> stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah and 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 somehow and somehow that that is more of a point of conversation than than just you know the 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 random throw in there of of having sukihi and karen uh, you know just <laughs> naked in bed together well, well you know. here's the thing here's the thing jacob here's the thing that could have just been gals being pals no no think about it this way like all of this all of this show has mm -hmm. been this whole thing where you get so many like rapid fire things thrown your way and yes, such that aren't always supposed to be taken literally yeah and in fact this yeah. entire arc is all about the whole idea of you fakes know, fake and imposter. lies right and, and the and the facades that people that people put up for themselves and for each other right yeah yep absolutely absolutely and you think like araragi the 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 the, the, the creepy sister hentai kisser. that he is yeah, uh, -huh. uh wouldn't have some kind of weird fantasies <laughs> Oh, I could, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so anyway, let's let's go mm -hmm. with the whole Kaiki Sendra Gahara thing, sure. the actual meat of the episode, the 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 real mm -hmm. deal, the yes. the full crabo, right? Because that was established. Aragi's meat is, you know, uh, yeah, tiny. Yeah, very mm -hmm. very inferior to yes. the Kaiki song. We have the mm -hmm. reveal that Kaiki and Sendra Gahara did have some kind of a something something. Between At the very other. least, she liked him. Well, the thing is, is that I think they liked each other. Right, and it's, that's why he's like, oh, you're you're boring now, all yep. that stuff. Uh -huh. yep. And yep. she, of course, was not really willing to talk details about the whole thing, mm -hmm. but she's trying to assure Araragi, don't worry about it. Right. And also <laughs> try to confirm herself. whether or not I'm a virgin or anything like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just just understand, just it wasn't serious. It was a small tonight. thing. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm just saying she's basically like... She is wearing the pants in this relationship. No, like, she's basically giving him the most communication that she can to be like, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think it's really hot. I think it's really attractive oh, when, a, when a woman basically goes, yes. hey, let's. I'm not going to play any games here. Mm -hmm. Just because Sandra Gahara is all about playing oh, yeah. games. Even, even to oh, the point of the, gosh. oh, yes, you love the, the, the quivering damsel in distress. So, oh. And then in this mm -hmm. case here, she's basically just like, all right, <laughs> be gentle with me. 
<laughs> on some level, even if she is being like a cock tease with that and stuff as well. Oh, it's still great, Sandra. It's Gahar. still great, Sandra. Gahar, oh, yeah, because yeah. Then they probably had a makeout session or at least oh, or something. Yes, you know? yes. Uh huh. Because they're outside, so at the at the very least, you know. I mean, there's no one else that exists in this world, so they didn't That's really also need to true, find a place, yeah. you know. But you know, Hanakawa is always you yeah. Know, Hanakawa was always be. watching. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although if Senju Gahara ends up knowing about the whole situation with Shinobu, then, you know, there's the whole idea that are they ever truly, truly in mm, private? So, that's true. you know, it's true. Um, um, but this whole this whole reveal thing that basically Kaiki's whole thing of being a con artist is that there is no, you know, supernatural aspects right. to the Karin B situation. Is, in, in many ways, the sincerest con artist possible exactly he's he is a simple honest con artist yeah that's it like there's nothing else and, and it's beautiful and, and he might lie to you and make you think that he's something else but that's just the greatest con of all exactly and all the and all the loop diddy loop you know reasoning of like ah mm -hmm. oh, but if you had a person that was a fake at being a fake then would that could you have a fake that's more powerful than the real thing you know it's like all just verbal you know hoobity ha to well, make them the, be like oh my god well the thing guy. the thing is though is that that's something that needs to be discussed here because kaiki's role in the story is one that he basically is a meta commentary on the delusions that these characters yeah. operate within mm -hmm. and they operate dramatically within and mm -hmm. the fire sisters are one of the purest examples of this yep. mm -hmm. we Absolutely. get to see their over the top bravado at going yes. out and being allies of justice or better justice, yet, justice itself. itself yeah but what do you think araragi is oh yeah like, everything think... that araragi said to kara and it was like wow if only he could like say this while looking in a mirror he yeah could grow so much yeah and that's something there that you you have to kind of take with that not a grain of salt, but kind of a an acknowledgement that Araragi constantly projects. Oh, that's, absolutely. That's kind of the whole yep. thing of why this is, you know, his story. That's the, the whole thing of why right. this is, you know, told, you know, from his perspective mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and that, it's a fantastic way to make all the other characters' arcs be in parallel with Araragi by making right. him, in a lot of ways, the most flawed out of all of them. So that that right. way, all of and he their does change. problems, yeah, all, he, does he does change. change. He does grow. He does evolve. He does have things right. that are maybe problems that reveal themselves as he changes, and then new kind of problems show up. Or this show isn't that linear where we will, you know, even it's probably just our watching order. But like, we kind of have to infer a lot of the linear things from the broader context that we have because we're watching this. Um, out of right. out of order. Well, and 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 opting for for perspective on a character instead of actual character change yeah. is a very legitimate storytelling style. It is. It is. It's characterization. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Characterization rather than character development. Yeah. Um, sure. That's very that is things. that is a totally legitimate way way of doing things. And and in yeah. some ways that's the. It's a lot of ways people do world building. Yeah. It's 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 a lot of the ways that people do world building. And in some ways, since this is such a long running show, that might be the best way to do it and sure. have it constantly focus on the characters. That way you still don't – you don't damage basically what got people into the show in the first place because since the main character is such an important part of the story. Mm -hmm. But you're able to make it interesting because you're constantly getting to know this character better and better and better. Yeah, and, and while you do need to have actual development with right. those characters. Th it's that can one... be the more – you know, the minor things, you know, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. So now that we have Kaiki basically – giving his lesson like his literal like he was the all right kids now that i'm leaving here's yeah. the lesson you were supposed yep. to learn do you think though that araragi actually learned the lesson though? no i don't think he did nope. because i think senju gahara really had a moment of moment of clarity mm -hmm. um with regards to this whole thing because when she had her hey well i you know i chose araragi and he loves me for who i am right now and i you know mm -hmm. so therefore i i love me for who i am there was kind of this aspect of where he kind of <laughs> kaiki kind of was like oh oh okay so that's that's how it is but then he attacks not really attacks but more informs her from the the other angle of things of like well let me just clear up all the past things for you so that you don't have to deal with them moving forward in this relationship with araragi because if you do maybe on mm -hmm. some level you know that could actually hurt the relationship so and, it, it almost right. was like he went from being a 
con man to being a like mm-hmm. hey i have a few more years not a lot but you know i mean who knows but i don't know how old <laughs> kaiki is sure but that he's uh got some wisdom to share here and by yes. him just definitively dropping these things there even though she's in kind of defense mode of like, ah, uh-huh. those, those are lies. Like, right, why those would are the you... words of a con man, yeah. yeah. Or is that all part of the con, that he's conning her into thinking of him as a con man, that way he can basically give her the things that will potentially help her, but then she can still hold the thing in her mind of him just being a con man that is just an enemy, an enemy, an enemy. That way she doesn't have to reconcile that potential contradiction. I would say that's a bit convoluted for it. I would say that the simpler thing is that he is able to say basically anything in this whole setting here because they're at a standoff, at a confrontation of sorts. Uh-huh. But if he can say anything that makes her even slightly doubt his uh, his status as a con man, those things will actually go straight to the core of who she is because she's in a vulnerable place right now. She's co- confronting someone. She's at a right. crossroads, essentially. Yeah. So he can actually... You know how he was saying, like, you know, Senja Gohara, you got boring and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think in some ways he's basically realizing, oh, actually, I can help her here genuinely. I'm not I'm not actually going to make her do anything here. But if she if she has her perceptors, if she's paying mm-hmm. attention here, even if what I'm saying is a lie, this is something that might settle into her permanent core. Right. And I think that it's interesting that right after he kind of solidifies all potential past things with regards to her um to her whole thing with the her guy attacker, who, yeah. her attacker her potential rapist um she then basically is like Aro, okay araragi i'm ready <laughs> like, let's let's go now that might have been her request uh-huh then and, and that had been decided were, beforehand beforehand when, yeah. exactly yeah uh-huh. but i do find it as something that's like Okay, given that when Senja Gahara was first introduced, she mm-hmm. was kind of testing Araragi yes. to be like, you know, what kind of a man are you right. when I, you know, showcase, you know, my body that isn't worth the jail time. So, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh-huh. now here, um, after having the combination of Araragi being her, you know, her prince saving her for the second right. time, in some ways, it was something where he didn't even need to really do anything other than be there sure because she just needed to be strong in her confrontation with kaiki but kaiki made the confrontation easier by actually helping her Mm -hmm. with her past yep Yep. so so i i I don't know i just i just love the way kaiki handled this yeah despite the 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 silly roundabout Uh aspect of it well and and i feel like it's something where because he was saying he said that he did he doesn't he doesn't do the conning and stuff and, and all uh-huh. the money things because of the because of the idea of you know profit or profit, you know, or, profit loss. or loss yeah. right you know it's the idea that, <laughs> that he, was funny he does the cons just because that's what he likes to do right, right. Yeah. the fact you know maybe it explains why why granted you know middle schoolers they probably don't have much money but with the amount of time that it would take to do those cons with the middle schoolers and stuff and the amount of money that he would be making if he's this good of a con man, he could have done like, you know, more right, like right. big fish kind of cons. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right. <laughs> Whereas this is just because he clearly finds it fun. Yeah. And then he says that Senja Gahara is boring. Yeah. Which could be considered as a way of basically saying that I'm being honest with you here. Yeah. Right. I'm not trying to con you. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm, yeah. I'm basically done. I, that, mm, it's, it's boring. I'm not interested, you know? Sure. Um, and then he says all the stuff about, you know, her attacker and, you know, the, the stuff that helps her find some peace, basically, some resolution, mm-hmm. even though she ends up disregarding what he says. Right. But, yeah. yeah. Um, we had the whole fight with Karin and our... Beautifully the animated. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I actually wanted to bring up in this fight was when you see uh, them kind of going uh, at this and stuff, there's this part of where... I'm reminded of when uh, uh, Karin basically was upset that he hadn't been to the dojo in a while. And okay. she thanks him over and over and over again all throughout the fight. Like, thank you, Onichan. And then as they're, you know, just, you know, kind of having this whole, you know, encounter here. Uh-huh. She seems to be just enjoying the fact that, uh, 
um, that that he's basically uh, letting her, you know, go all out. On right. Him that basically he's letting the facade drop away. Right. Right. Because you know, battle is the purest form of expression. I am sure. almost positive that that is how Karin sees the world. Right. Sure. So here she's able to finally bear herself in a way to Araragi and say, "This is who I am. This is how I feel." And now he can. He, he's sort of forced to accept those feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, you know, uh, what was it? When when he says something about, like, um, uh, you know, be careful that you don't, you know, fall in love or something like that. And she's like, I'm already in love. Oh. What was yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, at the very end. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take care of everything. You know, I'll clean up the mess. You know, it's an honor. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how you know. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> but don't fall in love. You know, yeah, I mean, that that right. that'd be incestuous. And she says, "I'm already in love with Niu Chen." Yep. Now, mm-hmm. and then she says, "Take care of the rest." What's mm-hmm. what's I think kind of what I think is kind of not necessarily like I actually don't know an adjective for it specifically. What I what okay. I think is what I think is interesting. I'll just use that. Is that on some level? she does love her brother like oh, yeah like in some ways of uh between her and sukihi she kind of leads the charge it seems on this whole fire sister justice Definitely. thing yep. and sukihi's sukihi's confidence is one that i would say less so self deluded if you th- if you think about right, it like we don't... think she kind of wears her emotions a little bit more kind of like if she's upset, she's upset. Right. Uh-huh. Whereas Karin seems to be the one that will be like, ah, I'm just gonna stifle it, and then right. I will mm-hmm. figure things out. But it'll come out in more brash ways. Whereas Sukihis right. will be more passive aggressive, um, or just straight up upfront. You know, I have a knife. You know, who's that girl in the in the bathtub with you? Well, you know, sure. Um, the thing I I think here with this whole joke about the whole you know <laughs> Oni Chan um, uh-huh. is that. She had been asking for help, basically, from him all this time. But he was saying, no, you're just playing a game. You're just playing a dumb game. None of this is actually worthwhile. And by him saying that, he's kind of mm-hmm. devaluing her. And then at and the end, he basically says, I'll, I'll take care of this for you. He's taking it seriously. Right. By him basically saying that there is something that needs to be fought for. There is something that needs to be right. done. Mm-hmm. He's taking what is fake... You know, and he's making it real. Sure. Yep. And Kaiki basically goes in there and says, you know, because of the way things are being handled by these fakes, they're making it real, like even more real than mm-hmm. the actual real thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I just love the basically the way they set up Kaiki's whole encounter later in the episode by having this whole physical encounter here. And while the whole, you know, fight, silly comedy aspect of it is... Uh-huh. Destroying the entire it, It's town. actually kind of hilarious. Well, and, and there's a bunch of little, like, jokes and uh-huh. say... Well, and one of, the, one of the things that I thought was really interesting here is how they used yellow with the scenery so much. And if you think about the fact that they're destroying so much of the environment, right? Okay. Even though Karin is a black belt, normally that would not be possible, right? And, you know, and, and we've dealt with things where it it straight up breaks the, the laws of physics with, like, Kanbaru and, you know, and right. all that stuff, right? But here, they shouldn't actually be destroying the environment. Maybe Araragi, maybe, but he doesn't even really have the strength as much anymore. Mm-hmm. So, is this then a representation of Karin's own inner world that has and all the stuff with the bee and everything, right? Mm-hmm. And she's basically punching it out. Right. Okay. And yeah. and she's 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 destroying the facade, right, with Araragi there. That facade that's usually always up, right? Sure. And then finally when they have the vulnerable conversation, it's you know, when pretty much everything is destroyed. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was cool. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the also I would say towards the end, once everything's destroyed, everything is yellow, white, and black. Mm-hmm. So yep. there's that as well. Yep. Um also, the whole thing of yellow, white, and black, if you kind of blend those together, you know, mm-hmm. and you don't make the black part as strong, it's more just a thing that's a hint in the background, yellow, white, and black would make orange, essentially. Like, it would be a... 
Uh, wouldn't that be yellow and red? No, obviously, Jacob. I'm okay. saying that like it would be a darker form of yellow, basically. If you didn't take the black, and oh, it was okay. just a, a hint of it, you know. I'm talking about paint, like pigmentation. Not uh-huh. obviously if you mix, because black wouldn't mix black with anything. You just make black. You know, it doesn't. Right, right. It doesn't work that way. But um, I just, you know, it's a fire sisters thing. Gotcha. Um, the uh, last thing I want to say is basically that there's this mocking of what um, Araragi did for his sister. Basically, in that he's like, um, is your life, uh, what about you? Is your life dramatic? He's like, I feel an unpleasant, sh- unpleasant presence from your shadow, and it appears you've taken half your sister's pain upon yourself. Madness to do something so risky for no money. And. I think what's interesting here is that right before this, he's talking about um, uh, Sandra Gahara Uh and how she's basically, uh, well, well, no, in some some ways that he's a fake. And what what does he say to this? Yeah, there's nothing dramatic about me. Right. um, Or about about you. But then when he focuses on Araragi, Uh in some ways he's basically saying, Ah, look at all this drama you intentionally try to bring into your life. Like, is that fake kind of a thing? Well, that's fake in that I would say that it's something that you need to address. But I would say the biggest thing that he needs to address is actually he just calls it straight up madness. Because on some level, Araragi took upon himself 50% of something that doesn't exist. Right. You know, not yeah. that it doesn't exist. It obviously exists because uh-huh. she made it real. And and at the point, he thought it was real. Exactly. Uh-huh. But, um... But, yeah, you, yeah, madness. Have you looked at, you know, this scan carefully, Doctor? It's his face. It's a love. Yes. I, I, I basically just look at this and see Araragi's having his own form of delusion just being this constant build-up thing. And that leads to madness it just it just does gotcha so if if araragi is basically one that Hmm. has been this constant like savior's complex like constantly going about like putting himself into crazy situations to help others Uh and stuff when actually it's those people that need to basically solve their own problems okay Uh in some ways it's the biggest form of delusion that he's somehow helping Sure. And I think this whole instance with his sister is kind of the best example of, of how that. he's really doing nothing. He's like, really, he's really doing uh-huh. nothing. Like, Although that conversation with Karen was important. And it was the good conversation to, good to had, had nothing to do with him taking up on right. her pain, though. Exactly. What helped yep. her was that he ended up listening and basically spending time with them. Right. He treated her like a person. Yep. He treated her like he how she wanted her. to be treated. Right. Exactly. Now, all the times where Araragi saving someone, there is this aspect of him wanting to be maybe kind of like Karin. He wants to be cool. He wants yeah. to go out there and be uh-huh. an ally of justice and right. do, the, do the right thing. But in some ways, that's not what helps her. All of this right. is something that is more tied to their relationship with each other yeah. rather than actually the Karin B thing. And so, after finally communicating with her in the way that she understands, uh-huh. right? As opposed to, well, what he was doing before, which just wasn't helpful. Right. Yeah. Yep. I like how, in some ways, he kind of scolds her with this whole thing here. But then she gives the, uh, see, you know, what's wrong with doing something for someone else? Mm-hmm. You know, what's wrong with self-sacrifice? Even if we're fakes, what's wrong with that? Has it ever caused you any trouble? I, I really... <laughs> I I really like how this is something that as a question saying what's wrong with self-sacrifice even if we're fakes what's wrong with that there's three questions here has it ever caused you any trouble and I think in some ways she's asking like <sighs> or maybe maybe this is just too meta what's wrong with self-sacrifice well according to him there's nothing wrong with self-sacrifice Araragi because that's that's all he does basically, right? Uh, sure. Then if when if we're fakes, what's wrong with that? According to Araragi, probably nothing. Because that's a lot of ways what he is. Well, as and that, well, yeah, and that's what he ends up saying. Yeah, right. But then it says, "Has it ever caused you any trouble?" And he says, "For a long time now." But but, um, I never, I never said, said, it, said was it was wrong. wrong. Right. So here's the thing. 
here's the thing. Is he aware of what he's saying here? Uh, what do you mean? Okay. What, what do you think he's saying here? Well, what I think is interesting is that he's mm -hmm. basically saying... I never said that being a fake, that self-sacrifice, all of that was wrong, but has it ever caused you any trouble? For a long time. And he now. says, for a long time now, meaning that in some ways it's going to continue doing that. Sure. But I, I, I love how he says this mm -hmm. here. If you're prepared to live with a sense of inferiority for the rest of your life, um, then even if you're a fake, isn't that the same as being real? That there's so many dangerous lines of thinking that are just a few degrees off from that, where I think that if Araragi continues down this path in the way that he has been, mm -hmm. it's one that will erode his sense of fake versus real, his perception on reality, and it will, it will lead him to madness, basically. Well, one of the things that I'm really curious about with how Araragi interacts with his sisters mm -hmm. is that the things that they do are very similar to the things that he does. Uh -huh. and, very similar. And in a lot of cases, they might be doing that because they see him. He's the older that, brother. Right, yep. he's the older brother, and they yep. want to be like their older brother, right? Yep. And he ends up telling them off for it. Now, is that something where he's telling off himself, or is it something where there's this double standard, this, you know, this That's fakeness it. to it, That's where he it. isn't yep. able to deal with himself seriously because yep. there's these things that he realizes about himself, but he doesn't really want to deal mm -hmm. with it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so he ends up, you know, so he's a hypocrite, right? Yep. You yep. know, and he's and then, definitely, yep. Which makes it, which makes him a fantastic main character, not just for the story in general, totally. but also for this story. You know, totally. the, the impostery. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that every every story arc we've been on thus far has some semblance huh, of it that's mm -hmm. connected back to Araragi's yeah. main uh -huh. um, character dynamic within himself. And that's that's a weird way to say it. Let me say it a better way. Reflects back to his current state of being, I would say. Sure. And on some level, his state of being has gotten more dramatic over the course of time. It's gotten more complicated. Yeah. And I think Kaiki is a meta way of poking fun at the idea that Araragi has got all these attachments and responsibilities and all these right. extra things that he's kind of tagged taken upon himself, himself. Take, tagged upon himself yes taken uh -huh. upon himself yes and the more and more he does that the more and more likely it is that one or more of them ends up kind of getting mishandled sure and on yeah and on some level i think that this stuff with his sister or sisters will be a uh a wake-up call for that hopefully and if it didn't happen here with um with karin with karin and stuff maybe it will be with sukihi yeah yeah although i could definitely see uh araragi forgetting a lot of the stuff that happened this day because he very huh? well had something else <laughs> yes. replace it for uh what will be yes. most memorable and then had a weird yuri sister fantasy all right yeah, so yeah. Y'all, that was uh that was an episode mm -hmm. of, of Nisei Monogatari. Yep. Wow. <laughs> lots yeah. of lots of good stuff. A very long episode in terms yeah. of actual uh runtime. Mm -hmm. But uh they concluded the Karen B or the Karen, Karen B arc. Yeah. Now and for Sukihi Phoenix, which I'm very excited Tsukihi for because Phoenix. I love Phoenixes, so however they do this is like she all right, burns let's, let's out go. too quickly. But, but then she needs to be revived. She rises from the ashes. Right. So maybe sometimes she one time she doesn't rise back you know sure she, she needs to be she needs to be revived to be or does when she thing. comes back from the ashes is she the same or does you know like it, is she slowly eroding hmm all right Who knows? well uh y'all thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now go check out the link in the description mm -hmm. below for our patreon you can get an early access there and any level of support gets you access to our discord where you can chat with us about nisei monogatari non-spoiler of course or just mm -hmm. stories in general or a specific story like battle lines yeah. my sci-fi novel it's available for sale on amazon it's absolutely wonderful with wonderful characters now is there the level of fan service in there that there has been in nisei monogatari not really but it's still fantastic and i think you'll love it so yeah link in the description um if you're outside the u.s then only ebook but that means you get it instantaneously so yeah there you go uh, so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time